Welcome. It's California edition. I'm Brad Palmer. It's in Sacramento. We are joined by Lorena Gonzalez. She is a member of the California State Assembly. But when she went to Stanford University, she was a cheerleader. Yes, sir. Tell us about those days. Well, it, you know, I was a cheerleader in high school, and what what bigger dream for for a girl to to go off to college and be able to cheer for um, a Division One, you course. know, school and get to go uh, travel? I hadn't been on a lot of airplanes at that point. Right. Got to travel to a lot of different places, cheer in some bowl games. Of course. Um, you know, and it was at exciting. Stanford. At Stanford, of all places, yeah. So, so many women may pursue cheer as a profession, either as a way to get into dance or otherwise. Mm -hmm. I had a friend who was a cheerleader for the Raiders when they were sure. in LA in the 80s. I was shocked to learn from my friend that they really, I mean, they're paid a pittance. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about what the pay is for professional cheerleaders today. Well, today it just depends on the team. Okay. Um, some of them basically have classified them as glorified volunteers and pay nothing, maybe a little stipend. Some have um, decided that they're independent contractors and pay them as such. Um, some contract with another company who basically right. gives them, a, a, you know, a, a small stipend per game, $50, $75 per game. But what um, are the responsibilities? Well, that's the thing. You know, if you look at the employment contract between the team and the cheerleader, it, it, it's probably the most extensive contract you'll see. They have to show up early to the game, of course, they don't get paid for that. They have to go to practices. They have to wear their hair a certain way, go to certain makeup artists. They have to um, go to these, uh, serve as an ambassador for right. the team at a certain amount of functions. They have to go to calendar shoots. Don't get paid for that. They don't um, get, so when I buy a Raider at calendar, the women in that calendar are not being paid? No. How, how is that possible? You know, well, they've always just kind of for decades, we've just accepted, um, and the teams would say, and people would say, right. they should just be happy that they get the opportunity um, to fulfill this dream. You know, it's it's so many. I, I was one of those right. little girls. You you want to grow up and, and be a charger girl. In sure, my, you know, that, that seems like a, a, a great honor. Um, but when you realize the hard work involved and the hours put in and the fact that they're not even getting a minimum wage. Well, yeah, well, now, explain that to me. When you're a labor lawyer mm -hmm. and you worked for labor for many years, how is that legal? I mean, if they're working, let's just say, $50 for a game, games last sure. four or five hours, they're there before and after. That alone. Them, yeah, <laughs> that alone breaks minimum sure. wage laws. Um, you know, it, it's, who knows, but there are lawsuits that have been filed right. recently throughout the United States, in fact, um, Buffalo, Baltimore, right. and of course, the Oakland Raiders. Right. And so uh, we think it's a misclassification, uh, definitely under California law. We have some pretty tight classification laws on independent contractors. So so it was clear that um, the, these women were misclassified, you know, they don't even get workers' comp, um, and so... Health? <laughs> nothing, nothing. So if you get injured, you're done. I mean, That's think it. about workers' comp. I mean, at a minimum, you get thrown <laughs> right, in the air, right. you fall on so, your ankle. So it, it um, Oakland got sued right. uh, by the Raiderettes and, and have settled. There's a couple still pending issues, and those lawsuits are pending. And it's interesting you say settled because, as you know, I mean, I was a lawyer, you were too. Those are confidential. Yes, those settlements. Yes. So we really don't know what the results were. Well, and you know what's interesting too is in our attempts to reach out to other cheerleaders statewide, um, a number of whom, you know, I, ha I have a couple who danced with my daughter, and uh, so you yes. know we'd call people up, and everybody's like, I can't talk about it because they signed a confidentiality agreement to the with extent, the team. To the extent that you're aware, it, it seems as if football is the sport where their cheerleaders are paid the least. Right. I, I don't know if that's right. That is. True. What about basketball? I mean, they're <laughs> around. Is that does that profession as a general proposition, that sport, pay them better? Well, um, the work that we did in, in kind of trying to find out, sure. the, the basketball teams all say that they do pay minimum wage. Um, okay. In fact, most of them, I think, suggest that they pay a, a more living wage. Okay. Um, but we want to ensure that it's clear that these cheerleaders are, in fact, employees, which means not only a minimum wage, that they get right. overtime if they're required to work over eight hours, just like any other employee, of course. that there's workers' comp in case they get injured on the job. Um, once sick days gets right. implemented July 1st, they'll have Thanks the to right to Thanks three to paid you. sick days. Um, basically, that they're, they're paid and treated just like the guy who's selling you beer. I mean, it's incredible, right? Oh, that is interesting right? you say that. It's like, it's think about that. game day. When you walk into an arena or you walk into um, a stadium, every person that you interact with, a majority of them are men, but every person, the guy who takes your ticket, who, who mm -hmm. cleans up after you, who brings you um, and sells you a beer, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the folks on the field, the trainers, the coaches, every single person, the janitor afterwards, gets paid as an employee. And for decades, only the cheerleaders, the entire group of women who perform and are part of the game day experience, people would said, well, you should, you, you should be happy you have that opportunity. So tell us more about AB202. 
So AB 202 um, just passed Assembly Labor Committee. and Which is not an easy feat. <laughs> it's not uh, always easy. I mean, and tell us about that to the extent that you can tell us. Sure. I have to presume that there were some sports teams that were trying to prevent AB 202 from getting out of labor. Well, it was interesting. I think uh, there, in, in particular, and we've been very honest about it, the, right. the lobbyist for the 49ers was trying to ensure that the team would not be held responsible if they contracted with somebody for the cheerleaders and then the cheerleaders weren't paid. And isn't our Aren't there laws now on that issue? There are. You right. know, we passed a law last year on, on contractor liability, and so uh, that that is in the bill. We want to make sure that the teams ensure, and they have the ability, they have the money to, they have the lawyers that can review right. a contract. Um, the contract uh, really has a number of provisions about, of course, the, these um, young women can't go wear the uniform somewhere, right? The, this is yeah. NFL-branded um, right. material, and so the team is intimately involved in um, the hiring and the contracting of these women. And so, uh, you know, they need to be responsible if their contractor so I, doesn't I must pay well. Ask, I'm not sure if we know the answer yet. So obviously if this law passes, it will apply to the teams that are based in California. Right. But what if, you know, the Buffalo Bills comes into California. For like a at, Super Bowl? For a Super Bowl or for any game for that matter. Well, profe Are they, yeah, professional please. cheerleaders don't travel with oh, the team. Don't. Think about this when you go to a game, you see your team's cheerleaders. Um, I think with a few exceptions, the Pro Bowl, okay. um, there's a cheerleader, I think, from every team. And, uh, and that's in right. Hawaii, so right. it doesn't okay. include. Now, if there was a Super Bowl here... Um, Huh. That's an interesting question. I think actually the bill speaks to California-based teams. Okay. So if the Super Bowl has a California-based team, those cheerleaders would still have to right. be paid accordingly. Um, I don't think it would uh, be able to affect teams that just travel in for and, one game. And I wonder, and again, I'm, I'm not taking a position, no, you know, no, I but know. I wonder, it, it could be a big revenue center for the team. I mean, if they really did have these individuals, these women, in this case women, under contract and it was their full-time job, I mean, think about what they could do. They could do a lot more with it, but you know, this is really about just basic respect, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the fact that um, the biggest argument against it, that they should just be happy. Hundreds of women try mm -hmm. out for this, they know the deal, they know what they're signing up for. Well, if you opened up football tryouts and said, you're gonna get $50 a game, you'd have you'd have a line from here to, mm -hmm. right, right. you know, to the other side it, of the exactly. Capitol, right? But that doesn't, we would never allow for that. Right. We wouldn't allow for movies to say, hey, you should be lucky you're in this movie, so we're mm -hmm. not gonna pay you. Um, that's not how labor law works. So although it's a dream of many girls and there are a right. ton of women who try out for these positions, um, they still need to be But how respected. many become Paula Abdul? I mean, if yeah. you think about it, they should just be happy that they're here. Yeah, a lot of them probably have dreams that I'll be able to parlay this sure. into being Paul Abdul. Abdul. Terry Hatcher, right. I think, was a uh, gold Laker rush girl. girl or or yeah, yeah, exactly. And so so some will, right? right. Some will make right. it. But the vast majority are doing something that is exciting, but they're they're being treated as um, employees. They're, they're generating revenue for the team. Right. Um, they're serving as ambassadors for the team, and they should just be compensated. That's all we're asking for. So what happens next? You got it out of labor. Does right. it go to judicial or appropes? I'm trying to think. It where goes to I... appropriations okay. just because because it's yeah, another thing the labor commissioner has to uh, oh, ensure. I see. I see. Um, but it should be minor and absorbable costs. We okay. should be able to get out of, um, I, I'm hopeful. What did, what did your friends on the Republican side say about this? Did they vote in favor of They labor? did not, they you did know, not. and huh. they didn't say a whole lot. Okay. Um, so they suggested, they asked if this would cover mascots, and it's an interesting question right. because mascots tend to be men. Um, and in uh, fact, if you look at the pay of the mascots we've been able to find, they right. actually get paid thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars a year. So the one position that's held by men, I don't think that yeah. they. Y yes, it, it would apply. However, I don't think that they're in the same position. Do you have a friend on the Senate side looking at this now? Uh, we have a couple who are right. interested in it. So I think it's generated some excitement. Of course, every time we have a committee hearing, I'm sorry, you know where this is going first? I completely forgot. Where? I should know. Arts. Ah. Well, Arts and entertainment, so of Ian course. Calderon? Ian Calderon's committee I, next week first. You're right. I think he'll <laughs> look, I jumped us back. Right. Yeah. So, um, but the interesting thing is, I pointed out, uh -huh. it first went to labor committee. Yeah. There's no women on that committee. It's now going to arts and entertainment. There are no women on that committee. Well, and there are plenty of women, um, relatively but, speaking. And, but you know, I'm bringing up some co cheerleaders. So. Yeah, right. You'll come back. Yeah. She's Lorena Gonzalez. I'm Brian Pomeroy. It's California edition.